We're joined now by CBS college football analyst Rick Neuheisel. And, Rick, I, I want to tell you this. There are some games on the schedule, right? But I feel like the game that no one's really talking about enough because we have the showdown between Texas OU and obviously Alabama's playing a and LSU, Florida. But, Rick, why isn't anyone talking about Iowa versus Penn State this week? Maybe because they saw Iowa play offense last week in the big house. <laughs> it, was, it was a tough. It was a tough go for Brian Ferentz, uh, Kirk's son, uh, who is the offensive coordinator there. They uh, managed all of one yard rushing. Right. They managed uh, to score three points and uh, gave up eight sacks and four turnovers. Other than that, it was a brilliant day. Uh, but I think it's going to be a whale of a game, and I think this is a. Uh, this is an opportunity for Penn State to kind of – I heard you talking about all the teams that are sitting there in that undefeated uh, uh, portion of their year. Right. Are they ready to prove themselves? Are they going to fall off into oblivion? Penn State came into this year kind of under the radar. You know, McSorley uh, was no longer there. I, I think this is a Penn State uh, opportunity to really show themselves as maybe the number one uh, – competitor to Ohio State in the Big Ten. To do so, they're going to have to play a whale of a game. Iowa City is a tough place to play. Iowa's defense, I mean, their offense struggled, but Iowa's defense was up to the task last week, holding Michigan to 10 points and under 300 yards of offense. So I think it's a great game. Iowa usually wins this game, and I just heard a stat that James Franklin, since going to Penn State, is 0-6 on the road against ranked opponents. So they got to prove something to get this done. Wow, oh, man, that, he's never beaten a ranked opponent on the road since he's been head coach on at the Penn road. State. Yeah, that's crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's the matchup, honestly, that I think people aren't talking about. But the people are talking about some other key matchups, especially when we look at what we think is probably not even enough points for the scoreboard to handle, which is Oklahoma's offense going against Texas this weekend. How do you see this one playing out, Rick? Well, the, the odds makers are saying it's going to be the scoreboard going crazy. I think they got the over under somewhere around seventy five, wow. <laughs> uh, which is by far and away the most points for the weekend. Uh, listen, Texas has struggled mightily against the pass. They're giving up three hundred twenty five yards a game. Now they've been beaten up with the injuries in the back end. We saw them play almost exclusively man coverage against Joe Burrow and the LSU team, and. That didn't work. Uh, they, the Tigers scored 45 that night. Uh, so they're going to have to have some answers on the back end because Oklahoma is averaging over 600 yards of offense every game. So that, to me, if they do that, then they give up Jalen Hurts on the ground. Jalen Hurts has nearly 500 yards rushing already this year. I think he's 23rd in the country and averages 8.8 .8 per carry. So it, it's – Pick your poison for Todd Orlando and that Texas defense. But the good news, if you're a Texas fan, is they've got Sam Ellinger, who I think puts on a cape every week and just <laughs> finds a way to to lead Texas to, uh, if they don't win, at least give up a heck of a fight. Ellinger is is John Wayne of Texas football. I mean, he is sturdy, tough. I mean, I think it's must see television. Mm -hmm. I think Oklahoma ultimately wins the game. But uh, I think you're going to be really treated to some extra special quarterback play. Rick Neuheisel, CBS Sports College Football Analyst, joining the Rich Eisen Show. Kirk Morrison here filling in for Rich. But, uh, you know, Rick, one of the things that – and I want you to put your head coaching hat on for a minute, okay? If I'm trying to devise a game plan <laughs> – to Let me see if I can dust it off. <laughs> yeah, dust it off for me a little bit, Coach. Uh, but – when you look at a guy like Jalen Hurts, and you've had a chance to really watch him extensively with, with CBS over the last couple of years, but you're seeing a different quarterback this year, a guy who's been able to throw. We knew about his running ability, but him as a passer this season, how would you try to stop him in, in this football game? Well, he's uh, he's much improved. And I, I would go back even a year, uh, while Lincoln Riley certainly deserves some credit, so too does Dan Enos, who uh, was the quarterback coach, coach there yeah. at Alabama last year while, while Jalen watched Tua Tunga Bailoa play. I think he got better. As a matter of fact, he was ready when they needed him in that SEC championship game. He goes in there and goes five for five on third down to help beat uh, Georgia and get Alabama back in the playoff. Uh, but 
he's clearly a much more refined quarterback today than he was when he was 26 and two as the starter at Alabama, where, you know, Lane Kiffin's offense had him looking deep and then coming down to a check down and then running. Uh, this to me has uh, much more in terms of scanning the field, getting across things. And when he's able to do that and you get guys like CD lamb running deep, open patterns uh, it's been wildly dangerous i mean he's had over 400 yard passing games he's run for as much as 175 uh with his own legs uh, it's a tough uh it's a tough offense to corral which we've known about lincoln riley but in terms of a guy who can run between the tackles you know kyler murray was a guy who could run outside but uh, this guy can run downhill that makes it really really tough for a defense to uh, figure out a way to stop him well, Rick, we're almost, what, six weeks into a college football season, and yet Alabama finally will take on a ranked opponent So as they take on Texas A&M, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on CBS. So, Rick, what will we find out about Alabama after playing Texas A&M this weekend? Well, I think this is an interesting contest. Now, the odds makers say it's 17 points, and Alabama's going to roll, and, and – you know, there's no reason to, to think that maybe that won't be the case. But I think this game sets up pretty well for A&M. Uh, Mike Elko's defense is built in such a way that everybody's got a responsibility. He calls it triple responsibility, meaning that almost all offenses with this RPO stuff going right. on have basically ways to uh, have basically ways to you know play option football. If, if you do this, I'm going to do that. Right. And so all of his defenders have a responsibility. It's not just uh, play the ball or play a gap. It's they've got responsibilities on players. Uh, Tunga Bailoa is not a run threat. They don't have Jalen Hurts as a backup, so they're not really using his legs. So I think they're going to be able to corral some of these yards after catch, which have been such a monster weapon for the tide. Uh, and I don't think they have same, the same pass rush, right? Uh, they don't have some of the monsters that have been up front in the past uh, for Alabama, some, some young guys uh, in that defensive front. So I think uh, Kellen Mond is going to have a little time to throw. And that wasn't the case when they played Clemson. It wasn't the case when they played Auburn. And I think uh, for that reason, I think A&M is going to stay in this game. And if they do that, getting into the fourth quarter, then I think that 100,000-plus uh, crowd can factor into this thing. Rick Neuheisel, CBS Sports College Football Analyst, joining the Rich Eisen Show. And to me, I think kind of the game of the weekend, one in which, um, you know, we get a chance to see Joe Burrow, again, the quarterback of LSU on the national stage, going against a Florida team that, you know, last week they found a way to win. They beat Auburn. But when you look at right now the way that LSU is playing, they seem like the biggest contender to beat Alabama. And obviously if they play against Georgia uh, as well. But what right now – the more and more I look at LSU, they just look like a complete football team. Am I right on that assessment, Rick? Well, it's the old adage, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> uh, so they couldn't beat Alabama playing the way they were playing, which was the three yards in a cloud of dust way. Uh, you know, Leonard Fournette was beating his head on the wall, right? Uh, but at the so they went and got this guy, Joe Brady, from the New Orleans Saints. Yes. And if you talk about a guy whose stock has gone straight through the roof, it's Joe Brady. <laughs> because <laughs> right. this offense doesn't look anything close to what we've seen in the old LSU teams. If, if someone came down from Mars having been a college football fan, they'd say, we landed on the wrong planet. That That's not LSU. <laughs> right. We've got to go someplace else. Uh, they just set a record for the most points ever scored in the first four weeks of an SEC season. Uh, and Burrow has been brilliant. Uh, the question remains, and I think we're going to find out a little bit more this weekend against Florida, how they'll do against a great pass rush. Check that box for the Gators. They are definitely that. And if they get Zuniga back this week, that'll even be better. Against great corners, check that box with uh, uh, Marco Wilson and C.J. Henderson. Those guys are really good. This is going to be a fascinating game. The question is, what kind of shape will Florida be in offensively, given the magnitude and the, the physicality of the game last week against Auburn? In this contest, given the fact that LSU didn't have that kind of a monster game, they, they kind of won one-sided game against Utah State. So I think that you have to lean towards uh, the Tigers there at home. 
but do not sleep on Dan Mullen. I think he's always got a trick up his sleeve. And I like this Kyle Trask. If he's healthy, I think he can play uh, uh, salty enough quarterback to keep the Gators in this thing all all uh, four quarters. Yeah. You know, one more game I got to throw at you, Coach, just because uh, we're joined now by Rick Neuheisel, CBS Sports college football analyst. But as I look throughout the slate, obviously there's going to be some separation for some teams. At, at some point, you got to figure out who are going to be the contenders, obviously in the SEC. Big Ten and the Big 12, but right now I, I want to focus on the Big Ten because we've seen Ohio State. They're idle this week. They don't play anyone. But you mentioned Penn State earlier. You've mentioned some of the other teams as well, uh, whether Michigan at the end of the year picks it up. But how do you see right now the the Big Ten kind of playing out? Well, I think Penn State's certainly a uh, in a position to show that they're going to have an opportunity to take on Ohio State and, and, and maybe be successful. The other team would be Wisconsin. Right. Wisconsin in five games has three shutouts. I don't care who you're playing. You shut people out, you're pretty <laughs> good on that side of the ball. And they also have the best running back in the country in Jonathan Taylor, who's having a monster season. So uh, if Wisconsin can continue to play, and they got a tough challenge this week against a really good run defense in, in Michigan State. But if Wisconsin holds serve this weekend and plays Sparty and beats them by a couple of touchdowns like Ohio State beat them a week ago, uh, then you're going to be sitting there going, wait a minute, Wisconsin at at, uh, the shoe here in a couple weeks is going to be one of those games where we're going to be sitting there going, okay, winner's in. Uh, It's it's going to be a really fun game to watch. uh, But you, you can't say enough about what's going on in Camp Randall, given yeah. that uh, three shutouts and the offense is clicking with this Jack Cohn at quarterback and Jonathan Taylor doing the all everything thing at uh, running back. But you know what's fascinating? You know what's fascinating? And I'm, I'm transitioning because here we are talking about all these big games over the weekend. Correct. And we haven't talked Clemson and Florida State. Mm. Those two teams used to be the playing time, yes. for national. Cha- I mean, both <laughs> of them won national championships within the last. Uh, what, six years? Yeah. It was 2013 when Florida State won one. Uh, Florida State's fallen that far off. And we aren't talking Notre Dame and SC. Ah, you got that me That game yeah. always gets top billing, and here's where the Trojans are. So you, you've got two fan bases there at USC and at uh, Florida State that are sitting there going, when are we going to get back in the conversation, which I think is also fascinating as we meet, as we reach the halfway pole in college football. Yeah, you kind of read my mind there. That was my last question for you, just looking at the USC-Notre Dame game, is that we don't even talk about that one anymore because Notre Dame is probably still in that era of a, as, a, as a top-10 team, and USC not a, of, is of the unranked uh, teams right now. So, that game has kind of lost its luster, and, and I still think that USC has a chance to go out and upset Notre Dame. Uh, USC is playing hard for their coach. Yes, they are. The story within the story there is can Clay Helton survive? You've got a new uh, president there on the campus at USC. She's already taken uh, Lynn Swan's resignation. So what is to become of the head coach? Uh, Lynn Swan's no longer there. Uh, that, but the team is playing their tail off for him. That was on on display when they handed Utah their only loss on a Friday night in the Coliseum. They got beat uh, two weeks ago against Washington up in Seattle. That's a tough place to play. I think this is the all-or-nothing round right here for the Trojans, and I expect them to play like it, to circle the wagons and play tooth and nail against the Fighting Irish. I think the Irish probably win the game, but I think it's another one of those games that's going to go down to the final drive. Hey, Rick, I uh, look forward to uh, your analysis this weekend as I'm on my flight back from Kalamazoo, Michigan, so I get a chance to watch you on the flight back as, as, you're, uh, as you get a chance to get some work in, you and Brian Jones there on College Football Today on CBS. Thanks for the time, Rick. You bet. I deserve combat pay this weekend, sitting next to Brian Jones watching that Texas-Oklahoma game. I, I Seriously, I have to wear earplugs. I, I, they're shrapnel. There's shrapnel when you're sitting next to that rascal. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. It's always like that, man. You, we, uh, you know how the former players are, Coach. You know how it goes. You're one. <laughs> uh, he loves his horns. He loves his horns. Absolutely. Hey, listen, enjoy the college football weekend. All right, you too, Coach. Sounds good. That's Rick Neuheisel, uh, CBS Sports College Football Analyst. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.